Thank you for joining me. This is Katie Whitledge with the Beyond the Technique podcast. Today, we are talking about controlling your growth. We have Alicia Strobel here as a first-time guest today. You will meet here, meet her in a moment. Before I bring Alicia to the mic, I want to give a shout-out to our sponsor, Meet Your Stylist. For those of you who have a salon website, which I imagine you all do, what better way to engage with your website visitors than to have a sticky opportunity all about themselves called Meet Your Stylist. Take our quick survey to get matched with your top three stylists at my salon. Picture it. Well, this is very enticing. And in fact, we can capture up to 36% of your website traffic. There's nothing else that can live on your website that does this for you. But the real important part is that Meet Your Stylist is like eHarmony for your hair salon and your stylist. Mm -hmm. We are going to match you with clients that are going to be the right personality for yours, who you do your best work with. This is based on love languages and lifestyle preferences and values. There's really nothing like a Meet Your Stylist, which is why hundreds of salons have joined Meet Your Stylist throughout the U.S. and Canada. We want you to join too. Go to meetyourstylist.com to get signed up. Alrighty, as I mentioned, we have first-time guest Alicia Strobel here. I cannot wait for you to meet her, but here's what I want you to know. If you want to see the faces behind the names, you can watch <laughs> our raw, unedited version of today's podcast on Beyond the Technique's YouTube page. So go to YouTube, find Beyond the Technique, click subscribe when you get there, and you will be notified every time a new video podcast like this drops for you. Well, let me just share that Alicia has been an Aveda stylist for over 20 years and a salon owner for 11 years. They are a lifestyle salon in St. Louis. Do I say that right? St. Louis. St. Louis. Yeah, St. Louis. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm thinking of Louisville, Kentucky. My The audio will crop that out if you're on video. Hello. you're That's the raw edit, edited part. So let me just share again <laughs> that Alicia salon... Good Lord. Alicia Salon is in St. Louis, Missouri, and she is currently growing her business and she loves sharing her knowledge of styling behind the chair and running an upbeat, thriving salon. She believes sharing information is an amazing way to stay connected and have success throughout our industry. And of course, she was recently named a top 200 salon in North America Congratulations, Alicia. Without further ado, help me welcome Alicia Strobel. Welcome to Beyond the Technique. Thank you. Hi. I got my my Panatone Berry Perry um, Top 200 fingernail polish going on for you guys today. You are ahead of the trends. Good for <laughs> you. Love it. It's so good to see your smiling face and get to just connect with you in this way and shine a light on your journey, which I, I want to start with that just to introduce you to everybody. Tell us a bit about yourself, Alicia, and how you got into the beauty industry. Oh yeah. Well, thank you first of all for having me on Katie. It's a pleasure to be here. And my journey started um, quite young. My great grandmother was a hairdresser and so was my aunt. She ran a teeny tiny, like 200 square foot salon out of the basement of her house. Um, on the days that my mom and dad worked, she was our child care provider. So I grew up in the salon, which was super awesome. So my poor tortured cabbage patch dolls had haircuts, perms, uh, roller sets, you name it, the whole entire nine yards. Um, my cousin got a very terrible haircut from me at one point in time. And I think that my passion just started there. <laughs> so very fun. And then um, when I was in high school, I taught dancing. So I had about a hundred plus girls at my fingertips to trial and error updos on. Um, they had some very expen inexpensive updos done for them for homecomings, winter dances, and um, my parents' toilet seat was my styling chair at that time. So post um, high school, I knew that I had um, some things to learn, some growing to do. So I did kind of take a breath, took a step back. Um, I went to community college for two years and I received my associates in business administration which kind of gave me a peek into um, just some ways of tracking finances, accounting, very, very basic skills. But um, 
things that I didn't know were really going to help me in the upcoming years. So after that, in 2000, I attended National Academy of Beauty Arts in St. Louis, Missouri. After that, I started my career at Salon St. Louis um, in the city of St. Louis. And it's a very fun, upbeat area of town. And unbeknownst to me, it was an Aveda salon. I knew absolutely nothing about Aveda at 21 years old. I just knew that when I walked into that salon, it smelled absolutely amazing. And shortly thereafter, I fell in love with the company, the product, and everything that Aveda had to offer. So that was that was the beginning of my career. <laughs> oh my gosh. So cool. And I love the dance aspect to your life. Just your creative, right? So, so surprised yes. that you did the business admin program, but like you said, there was a reason maybe not known at that time, but it came in handy. So you're part of this Aveda salon as a stylist. What did that transition look like where you decided I'm going to, I'm going to start my own salon. I'm going to be a salon owner. So there's, there's, this is, you know, part B of the story, I like had a few bumps in the road. So um, when I was at Salon St. Louis, I was very young and we like to all um, create our own narratives. So it is one of the things that I love to coach about is perception of what you think is going on and um, being able to communicate what actually is going on. So at 23, 24 years old, I had a narrative that maybe wasn't the most positive. So I heard that there was a new Aveda salon opening in another part of town. Um, I did want to spread my wings and see what else was out there. And it was a very, a very different part of town, a different culture, a different community. Um, but I ultimately believe that it helped shape my thoughts and ideas of um, how to become a successful hairdresser as well. The owners of that salon lived out of state. They weren't engaged. They weren't part of my everyday life. So very different than what I was used to at Salon St. Louis, which them not being in town ultimately led to them closing the salon. Um, so although my personal business was successful and some of those clients that I started doing back in 2004 are still my clients today. Um, that salon did close. I moved to another salon. So at this point, you're kind of feeling like you're the Aveda salon hopper. Where am I going to next? Um, and I stayed at that salon, loved, loved that salon. But when I turned 30, I was walking around my neighborhood and there was a salon that used to be at a very prominent corner in St. Louis. Um, if anybody out there is from the Midwest and you have heard of like Route 66, which is, you know, on the movie Cars, Cars 2, there's an ice cream shop called Ted Drew's. And so I'm about three doors down from Ted oh. Drew's. Cool. So I'm, I'm walking around the neighborhood and I'm kind of like, Ooh, I'm 30. Like, is this where I'm meant to be? And um, the salon that was there completely closed. So there's a big for lease or sale sign up. And I had just started dating my husband, whose grandfather was actually in the beauty industry. His grandfather built out salons um, for four other salons in St. Louis. And I came home and I was like, oh my gosh, my dream space, it's open. Like, what do you think? And he was like, let's do it. Let's do it. And I'm like, oh my God, what are we doing? So uh, we moved forward. So that was in 2011, January 18th of 2011. We opened up Salon Fleur de Lis. It was very important to me because where we were at in Salon, um, in the Salon, in the city of St. Louis to really fuse um, Aveda and our like iconic city symbols together. So Fleur de Lis actually means flower of the lily. So I thought taking that piece of Aveda, uh, their pure plant and flower essences, and taking an iconic symbol of St. Louis, which is the Fleur de Lis, we're also a French founded city. And so that was why I named it Salon Fleur de Lis. And it has been absolutely so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Thanks. 
Well, you are called to this and you have an amazing team. You're recognized as a top 200 salon. So you're doing a lot right, obviously. And you're meant for this. So tell us a little bit about uh, Salon Fleur de Lis. I was going to ask how to properly say that. I was assuming it was French, but I didn't want to mess it up. Um, (laughs) Tell us about your brand and your team. So my team is absolutely amazing. I am so blessed to have all these wonderful people by my side. I started out with one team member when I opened the salon, four chairs, and shortly we grew into about five team members. So I had to add a chair. And then about three years in, we did another like little mini renovation and added eight stations and a few more team members. And now in 2000 and I guess it was 18, we did a major renovation to the salon, all new stations, knocked down walls. And now we are a 10 station salon with 11 team members. And the culture that we really drive there is all based on um, education, environment, and community. We actually have a team culture statement that we talk about um, the fact that if we're not there supporting each other and supporting our community, that we can't have a thriving business. So we take all of those things together to make sure that we are elevating our salon experience, that we are elevating our community and lifting each other up, not only as like coworkers, but as stylists to make sure that we are always moving forward and not not falling behind. Wow, incredible. I mean, it really speaks to today's topic of control, um, controlling your growth. You had so much growth and had so many expansions, but what have you done along the way to make that possible? So yes, I mean, that, that was a big part, um, of our top 200, um, rebuilding, um, essay that we did is that we were growing so fast. And there was things that we were doing right. We were tracking, we had that happy work environment, but the culture that we thought that we had created that was so strong, we started seeing dwindle because we didn't have measurable points. And then we didn't have clear communication on how you were getting to those points. And when we realized this, we were at serious business and we were in a CUNITY session talking about um, plan to profit and all the wonderful things that they had to offer. So at that time we connected with, um, Tom, Tom and Aaron Kuhn, and they matched us with Carrie Perkins. Um, so they have a really cool process that they match you with your coach too. I mean, you created such a wonderful thing, Katie, because it's just, it's so smart and I love it. Um, but they did that where they matched us with Carrie, which is our coach because we did not feel like we had a system in place that was actionable and measurable to make sure that we kept all of our ideas flowing and that we weren't like stifling our growth. So they really um, at CUNITY have helped us by leaps and bounds, create measurable, trackable um, options for our staff to grow. They have so many incredible tools. They do like the plan for profits and whatnot. What do you feel was really the most impactful tool that you've applied to your business? Um, We use the Tuesday tracker. It's a 17% challenge where we talk about services and retail and what our total sales are. Um, Something really cool that we've done since the pandemic is we have quit double booking And my girls are more profitable, not double booking than they have ever been in their careers. And this is with reduction in hours and days. So it has been so cool to have them track and see what they're capable of and not feel like truly getting to that work smarter, not harder mentality and them having a visual way of seeing it has been so impactful because it was always 
do more, do more, do more. How do I fit in this? How do I fit in this? Can I come in early? Can I stay late? Can I squeeze in a haircut while the color is processing? And the pandemic just flattened that mentality out. We used to all work the same hours, the same days, Tuesday through Saturday. All of us have been having families and growing our families and going, how do we quit working Saturdays? And I was like, oh, I have a game plan. I have a game plan. I have a game plan. And then there was always something that just was like, you know, kept that hamster wheel going and we never like hit the stop button. So the pandemic hit the stop button for us. I have my girls, my staff um, all working every other Saturday now. And our like next level of engagement is we've start started tearing out our levels based on um, the chakras. So instead of like, I'm a level one stylist, I'm a level two stylist, um, we, we come up with this cool idea where you're a level one grounded stylist because when you're starting out, you're trying to find your footing, you're trying to get grounded. And with each chakra level, wow. you go up. When you get to seven, you're at wisdom. So we've been, we've been so working great. on that. <laughs> yeah. Literally the Thank first time I ever heard that. That's really cool, Alicia. Thank you. It was something we just we just created. And so now we're now we're working on matching um what your benefits are with like your level. So some of the girls are asking about on the Saturdays that they work an early out, or it's important for them to, you know, work an early out on a weekday because kids have sports. Um or a family member that they need to take care of. So what all of those like caveats to what's important to them is being matched by what we can offer them. Okay. Well, I have to ask the question that I assume a lot of salon owners are thinking right now. How do you become more profitable with taking less clients per day? Did you do a price increase with your Tuesday tracker program and they no longer double book? We want to know how did you pull oh, it? <laughs> So the cool thing about the 17% tracker is that it literally breaks down how much each guest is spending on average. So little things that you wouldn't think about that were being missed because of double booking, they were missing. So that botanical therapy conditioning treatment that you added on that you were so excited to tell your client about and they were so excited to get and they were probably even more excited then when they walked out the door with a free service because you are too busy double booking your other guests so that was huge right there so not even anything that they had to do other than focus on their client um, we also utilize salon biz in our salon and we got tablets for each one of the girls, what each one of my stylists, I'm sorry. I'm like, so used to having an all, I, I am no longer an all female driven salon. So all of my stylists, um, they, um, use the salon biz styling app and they're able to add their services. So as far as like, let's just use a color service as an example. They come in to get their hair colored. Um, we're following the full entire service wheel, no, no skip steps. And in the consultation, we have our, our tablets, we're talking to them already at the beginning of their consultation about, you know, do they just need a hair color service? Do they just need a haircut? What are the other services that we offer them that they can leave with that day? And we're automatically plugging that into their ticket item either at that time or while they're processing. So um, after, again, while they're getting their color done, the staff is taking their color bowls back, they're cleaning them, they come back, we offer an added value service. While we're giving that hand or shoulder massage, we're talking about, you know, um, do you just wanna relax for these few moments? If not, I'm happy to tell you about what I'm gonna be using as part of your shampoo and your styling routine today. So sometimes they are even adding that product onto their ticket during that pro um, processing time as well. Whereas again, before you're double booked, you're so excited to talk to them about this, but the next thing you know, you're like, bye, I gotta go rinse somebody else out. So you're, you're rushing and you forget to put that product up front. They, they're like, oh, it looks so good. It looks so good. And then they forget to get the products. So we're, we're not missing steps anymore. And it has just driven that ticket up. Now, when they go in to plug all their numbers, they can look to see 
um, what their average ticket dollar was versus what they had a goal set as. So it gives them some actual like visual measurable techniques to see, oh, I fell $5 short. Where could I add five, ten dollars Did I miss a product sale? Did I miss an eyebrow add-on? Where are the points of difference that I can be making sure that I'm servicing and taking care of my clients? I love that you're doing that. Thanks. Um, you are no stranger to growth. This is your jam. You've continuously <laughs> grown and your salon has. I hear you have some kind of exciting and uh, news to share with everybody today. I do. So um, speaking of growth, last week on Sunday, I just grew into a second location. And, yay, and even more exciting, I don't know if you guys remember at the beginning of this podcast when I said the very first salon that I ever worked at is Salon St. Louis. I purchased the salon that I worked at <laughs> my very, very, very first salon coming full circle. And I cannot wait to help them grow. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so this is an existing salon and you are mm -hmm. stepping in as the new owner yes. with an already established team of stylists. Yes. yes. Okay. Are you, are you able to share without sharing numbers? What yeah. kind of purchase situation were you in? Is it seller financing? Did you get funding to, you know, financing that? What, what that look like? What did that look like? I, I did not. Um, again, being very, uh, savvy with everything that's going on with the pandemic, um, between like Aveda, my staff and CUNITY, during the pandemic, we put several drivers in place to make sure that we weren't, um, putting ourselves at a disadvantage. So I continued to connect with my team. I made sure they all stayed employed during the pandemic. I didn't have anyone go on unemployment. I took advantage of the PPP. Um, we did a branded t-shirt sales that um, I took no profits from. I gave all the profits split equally between all of my stylists during the pandemic. And um, we also did door-to-door -door product delivery. That was something that my amazing husband and a couple of the team members did. They did contactless delivery for products. So we weren't, um, although we were falling behind in our services, we maintained our retail numbers and I was able to um, pay cash for the salon. Wow. Incredible. So that business admin program. <laughs> <laughs> back when really paid off and it did with your time with community I'm, I'm certain um helped with that as well absolutely <laughs> this is huge so there's so many things to congratulate you on what what are your main goals this year so my main goals this year are going to stay engaged with my team at Fleur de Lee. I want them to know that my life and taking on a second location is not going to change my commitment to them. I became a salon owner, not to make money, but to truly advocate for the stylist. Um, I don't, I don't ever intend to step away from behind the chair because I want to stay connected. I need to know what their needs are in order to provide them with the best work environment possible. So, um, my goal would to be stay engaged with them. My goal would be to keep them growing. But on the new salon, I want to share with them all these tips and tools because there are definitely some things that we can elevate there. Um, they have a great, a great area, great location, a great team. I think the biggest thing is to start putting drivers in place where they can see themselves succeeding and being successful. Um, and then I, I don't know, like, I don't know if it's a this year goal or eventually both of my locations are, are, are rentals. I would love to see myself owning a building, um, that my salon is in that, that that's on my, maybe like my five-year plan, but, but this year is just continuing with my, my team engagement. Yeah. So awesome. Alicia, you're doing incredible <laughs> work. Yeah. Thank you.
What would you, you know, as we kind of wind things down, what would be some words of wisdom and encouragement you'd want to share with owners who are listening today? I love that, that you just said that are listening today. Listen, I would always say making sure you're preserving your time for yourself, but making sure that you know um, what your staff is talking about, what's important to them. It's um, We've actually created an entrepreneur board as part of our quarter one one-on-ones um, because we want to listen to what our staff's needs are and we want to meet them halfway. So if there becomes something that is so important to them that they can't come to work and do their job every day. We need to know what that is because that's going to be their driving force for having a successful career inside of your salon. So our entrepreneur board is a big launch for us this year. Um, but listen, you know, understanding that we all have like to preserve like ourselves and our well-being and and what it is that we're trying to do. But if you can listen to your team and they know that you're hearing them, it, it will, it will do leaps and bounds for your business. Well, I hear you <laughs> and I'm so happy that you were here today. Um, I am listening. I have in our show notes, the link for a salon floor de Lee, their website, follow them on Instagram, stay connected yeah. with them. Alicia, you are an owner to keep an eye on. And I'm really excited just all you've accomplished so far. So I appreciate you taking time to be here to introduce yourself and your vision and your team to everybody at Beyond the Technique. Thank you. Oh my gosh. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, everybody, if you are loving Beyond the Technique, would you take just a moment to leave us a positive review on your listening platform? so that more people will discover Beyond the Technique, where we are here to change the way you are supported in your business. Until next time, everybody, have an awesome day and stay strong.